If I told you one of the scariest and most unsettling games I have ever played made me feel calm and at ease, you'd probably get very confused. On the surface, Dredge looks like a relaxing game with dreary yet beautiful graphics about upgrading a ship, inventory management, and catching fish. This game doesn't look particularly intense, so what makes it so terrifying? The answer is the same thing that occupies 71% of the Earth's surface, water, and the unknown beneath it. Games like Subnautica have played into this feeling of dread that seems to come as a human evolutionary response. Our unexplainable fear of water and what lies just outside of our vision range. Thalassophobia, also known as an intense fear of the ocean or deep bodies of water, is another term used to describe this condition. The terror of the ocean's immense depths, the unpredictability of its inhabitants, and the overwhelming distance from the safety of land. Dredge uses the setting of the ocean not just as a backdrop, but as a character in its own right, imbued with cosmic horror. So in this video, we'll delve into the creation process behind seamlessly merging the comfort of fishing with the spine-chilling ambience of Lovecraftian terror. Now, let's dive into the mysterious and haunting world of Dredge, where the tranquil life of fishing meets the unsettling depths of horror. Dredge starts somewhere in the 1900s with a fisherman alone on a boat, heading towards an ominous cluster of clouds. Responding to a job ad for an angler, he drives in the direction of his new career. But a dark mist rolls in and he crashes into rocks under a creepy lighthouse, not far from the small settlement of Greater Marrow. The game starts and the fisherman is greeted by the kind local mayor of a tiny oceanic town, who was friendly enough to move belongings from the hopelessly damaged boat to one of their old vessels. He's puzzled you missed the lighthouse, but he's just glad to see the new angler upright and beating. The mission is clear from the start. Fish up a storm, sell your catch to the fishmonger, and keep the town of Greater Marrow fed and satisfied. The mayor has one final important piece of advice. Make sure to get back by sundown, before the fog rolls in. The ocean is vast and full of secrets, and your little boat is, well, little. And this short introduction spoils the basic gameplay loop of Dredge. Set off, dive into the unknown, and as the sun sets and your hold fills, get back to safety to prepare to venture even further next time. Facing the mysteries of the deep is thrilling, but returning to civilization with its comforts and lights is a satisfying reward. As you sail across the sea, every action propels time forward in a day and night cycle. Time is the most precious resource available, yet the sheer amount of details and potential distractions can lead to a loss of focus on the initial goals. Reeling in a fish makes time move faster and giving the wrong input means you waste valuable time. One important example of Dredge's mind-blowing ways to tie in several genres of games is at the top of the screen. This eye serves as the fisherman's panic gauge, with higher levels leading to hallucinations that will change the reality around the boat. Crows that try to steal fish from the ship. Rocks that will appear out of seemingly nowhere. A lightning fast shark that swiftly targets the vessel. And other Lovecraftian horrors that scale in both size and danger level. Fishing becomes increasingly risky at high levels of panic and adds weight to giving the wrong input and spending unnecessary time out in the dark. However, some of the more exclusive fish only becomes available during the night hours. Make it home safely and the catch can be sold for new equipment like brighter lights, faster engines or better fishing equipment. Inventory management becomes trickier with every new catch because there's only so much space available and as the fisherman slowly trades for coin with the limited space available. Familiarity settles in, making it easier to relax and fully take the surroundings in. Dredge's blend of beauty and unsettling horror through muted and desaturated colors create a sense of isolation and desolation. It's beautiful, but it's deceptive, hinting at the darkness lurking beneath the surface. Even the environments and the characters have a hand-painted feel, giving them an almost dreamlike quality, adding to the surreal and unsettling mood of the game. There's a constant atmosphere that keeps you on edge, with a mystery underneath it all that invites exploration and adds another layer of depth. During a regular day out at sea, an odd piano-like note resonates upon reeling in an eel. 
It looks different from regular eels, with a new entry page in the encyclopedia. This compendium encompasses every fish species inhabiting dredge and its diverse habitats. The recently captured barbed eel is an aberration of the gray eel. All fish have mutated variants that are more challenging to find than their normal counterparts. And they are one of the first signs in the game that something isn't quite right. After taking the grotesque eel to the fishmonger, he slices it open and takes out a handkerchief. There is no way of knowing what this could be used for, but it doesn't take long for a strange man to look at you through the cabin window. He wants to inspect the uncovered artifact on Blackstone Isle, right next to the Marrows. There it's revealed the handkerchief comes from an old ship he was searching for, and asks you to find more important items from said ship. To gather them, he equips the vessel with the capability to dredge wrecks and dark depths to find lost relics. A ring, a necklace, a watch, and a music box with an ornate key. But then, only minutes later, the first chilling encounter with one of Dredge's many horrors unfolds. From a distance, it appears like a friendly ship is out in the night, but getting closer will reveal its true form as a huge angler fish that attacks the fisherman. The night angler can be fooled by shutting off lights and remaining still. However, once it initiates pursuit, it becomes difficult to escape. By navigating the archipelago and avoiding the hazards, the fisherman stumbles upon shimmering golden objects adrift in the ocean. These treasures hold messages in bottles, each containing diary entries by a newlywed named JJ. She narrates her arrival at the Marrows with her husband and recounts witnessing him dredge up a mysterious casket from the seafloor. And this marks the start of an enigmatic, underlying mystery that gradually unfolds as more messages in bottles are discovered. Yet there is another distinct fishing spot that stands out from the usual ones. Locations that shoot up an ominous red light that pierces the sky at night. These shining crimson spots hold relics, which can be dredged up for the collector. This is where the second relic is revealed, the ornate key. Hand the key to the collector and he will mark the next area on the map, the Gale Cliffs. Reaching that area won't be a simple task, as it demands the fisherman to cross the first vast stretch of ocean. The familiarity of the waters around the Marrows is far behind, and instead, the depths below show their ominous darkness, hinting at more untold creatures and mysteries lurking beneath. The calm and soothing vibe of fishing for new species near the safety of an island has vanished, replaced by a sense of unease and tension. The horror elements on the open ocean stem entirely from the uncharted depths. Forget the familiar terrors of serial killers or near-fatal car crashes. This game taps into the primal fear of the unknown lurking beneath the waves. There is a sense of dread that comes from the vulnerability of being adrift in the open sea. There is no sanctuary here like in the Marrows with plenty of places to dock and restock. Out in the open, it's just the eerie embrace of the unknown. As you draw nearer to the next set of islands, you'll begin to understand the origin of the name Gale Cliffs. The high walls form natural wind tunnels which create water spouts and a near constant howling sound. The primary settlement in the area is Ingfell, a now abandoned whaling town. This is also the first encounter with the traveling merchant, who sets up shop in different regions on her pontoon. The allure of catching new local fish is strong, but the seasoned fisherman has a mission. Somewhere in this uncharted region lies a relic to recover. At night, the ominous red light pierces the darkness once more, locating the mission objective. But a rock barrier stands in the way. Only explosives will clear the path. The retired whaler can provide the fisherman with packed explosives, but you need to find a family crest first. However, it appears some creature destroyed parts of the Gale Cliffs, dragging debris from the houses into its wretched burrows, including the crest. One look at the Gale Cliffs shows a big open area, with a lot of narrow passages ways that run between the cliffs. Once the fisherman navigates within the boundaries of these cliffs, the creature awakens. Falling debris and a rumbling sound mark the arrival of the serpent. Unlike the night anglers from the Marrows, the serpent is a terrifying roadblock to finding the family crest and forces the fisherman to explore around the area to find alternatives for getting through the narrow passageways. There are different ways to enter the cliffs, as well as a strange obelisk located behind the area that can only be interacted with at high levels of panic, describing the birth of the serpent. All whales disappeared from the whaling town and the cliffs became unstable. Residents attribute the fall of Ingfell to the creature's presence. 
Within the cliffs, the fishing experience intensifies due to the camera's positioning directly above the boat. This perspective allows you to see the approach of the monster from all directions, but it's not possible to see the time of day changing until the camera resets. One moment of distraction and the light outside is gone while the boat is lost in the middle of nowhere. Time is the most important resource in Dredge, the entire world designed to divert attention from its passage. This camera position, combined with the world that keeps moving around the boat, is one of many elements that seamlessly merges the horror and fishing genres. All attention is required for the minigame, making the incoming monster that much more unexpected and terrifying. This mechanic builds throughout the game, reaching a horrifying climax in one of the most intense and genius moments ever unleashed in the horror genre. The serpent's bite inflicts significant damage to the ship's hull, and unlike most other threats in Dredge, the serpent will attack regardless of time and panic level. Its presence is a stark reminder that the ocean operates on its own terms. The serpent, night angler, and aberrant fish pulled up from the depths are grotesque and often deformed beyond recognition. There are clear and an increasing number of signs that a malefic influence is corrupting the natural order with monstrosities far below, far beyond what you can normally contend with. Cosmic horror is about gradual dread, a lingering awareness of the magnitude and indifference of forces that transcend human comprehension. It's the perfect example of how to make a relaxing activity like fishing deeply unsettling. The serpent is easy to keep track of because of its glowing red eye and loud screech, so careful navigation will eventually locate the family crest. Bring it back to the hermit to acquire packed explosives and obtain the third lost relic, the music box. Additionally, the explosives enable the fishermen to clear rock barriers, making it easier to navigate and avoid the serpent on return visits. But this is only the start of the dreadful encounters with dangerous sea monsters. The moment arrives to set sail on the boundless ocean once more to talk to the collector, in pursuit of another missing relic while evading the encroaching terror. Upon reaching the Stellar Basin, the fisherman is greeted by an ecosystem that is very distinct from the verdant greenery and rocks of the Marrows and Gill Cliffs. This area is described as a popular tourist attraction due to its tropical weather and clear waters. And this is where the next relic is hiding. During the day, Stellar Basin is warm and welcoming with beautiful colors. After sunset, the corals and schools of fish turn blue and bioluminescent with a beautiful glow that keeps the entire area lit and inviting. Fishing unveils that the local wildlife closely resembles the species typically found in extremely deep sea conditions, like the barrel eye. A bizarre creature with a transparent head, housing two tubular eyes that can rotate to point upwards as well as forwards. However, after the encounter with the serpent in Gill Cliffs, the fisherman needs to be wary of the depths below for any lurking threats that might launch an attack from beneath. The layout of the Stellar Basin is open in design, featuring a large central area with a chasm in the middle. The small islands are surrounded by shallow waters, offering a sense of security as it's easy to see what's right below the surface. Some jelly bombs float about during the night, but they are merely a distraction. The heart of this place holds a far more horrifying secret. A kraken of immense size with tentacles coiling like monstrous serpents. This monstrosity is bigger than anything else so far, posing a danger to the fisherman as it will lash out with its tentacles, easily sinking the boat in a matter of seconds. Unfortunately, a red glow shines directly above the dangerous hole, leaving the fisherman no choice but to find a way to safely fish right on top of the creature. The complete indifference towards the fisherman's presence, only striking when approached, adds another layer of terror. Unlike the serpent and night anglers, which actively pursue the boat, the stellar basin creature doesn't even acknowledge the fisherman. That feeling of insignificance in the face of something vast is a complex emotion that you might have experienced yourself. A blend of wonder, fear, and humbling realization of our place in the universe. Cosmic Horror takes this feeling and cranks it up to 11. It explores the fear of the unknown and the unsettling vastness of space, or in this case, the ocean. Imagine encountering entities so alien and powerful that they defy human comprehension. Our usual ways of understanding the world 
world fails us, leaving us feeling utterly insignificant and vulnerable. Next time you're standing next to a giant tree or feel overwhelmed by the night sky, remember, you've experienced a bit of cosmic horror yourself. And the stellar basin creature mixes multiple elements to make it so frightening. It's an unknowable entity with motivations and forms we can't grasp. The indifference to humanity, like ants to a giant. And the sheer scale of the whole the creature inhabits. There is no way of knowing how big it is below what is visible on the surface. And there is no time for the fishermen to think about its power and mystery. There needs to be a way to retrieve the relic from the depths near the creature. In an old fortress close to the basin, the fisherman finds the researcher. She studied biological science and after graduating found a job in the research outpost inside the stellar basin, but was forced to leave when a large creature attacked the outpost. Similar to the serpent and the night anglers, it's impossible to harm or defeat permanently. But the outpost generator can be used to activate a device which temporarily wards off the creature. One of the most terrifying moments happens when the fisherman is right on top of the creature while angling for the lost relic. The creature is pacified by the generator, but the threat of its sudden awakening amplifies the undeniable source of terror. The masterful camera placement and the eerie device whirring in the background during the sequence stands out as a breathtaking dredge highlight. However, the expansive exploration of open space in Stellar Basin was about to give way to the most densely packed island in the game. On the horizon, an island teeming with trees and tangled branches looms in the distance. The island shape is hard to make out in the mass of foliage, appearing as one vast cluster from afar. After arriving at the local pontoon to rest and trade with the merchant, another island in this grand archipelago is waiting to be explored. One open passage right next to the pontoon leads into the twisted strand, and upon entering through the vines and trees, a strange structure in the middle of the water stands out. But as the boat gets closer, a luminous yellow serpent-like creature slowly emerges from the water. If the encounters with the night anglers, the serpent, and the stellar basin creature weren't enough, it's clear by now that this spells danger and it's time to get out before it's too late. The creature's yellow lights morph into a menacing red and a strange beam emanates from its head. To make matters worse, a tangle of vines erupts from the water, whipping towards the boat. The peaceful ritual of arriving at an island, casting a line to catch the local fish, before preparing to unravel new secrets has been shattered. At the heart of the clash between cozy fishing games and cosmic horror lies a battle of themes. Cozy games cradle the player in a sense of familiarity. Actions are predictable and goals are achievable. The world, while it may hold secrets, is fundamentally knowable and ours to shape. Cosmic horror tears this sense of security away. The universe in these games is vast and incomprehensible. We are not the masters of our destinies, but mere ants in the face of forces that may not even notice our existence. This contrast creates a fascinating tension. Dredge can lull us into the comfortable rhythm of the fishing genre, then subtly reveal something deeply unsettling lurking beneath the surface. With each upgrade, with each catch, satisfaction fades, and instead a creeping dread grows as we unknowingly stir something terrible. Previous islands were friendly and welcoming upon entry, allowing the fishermen to explore the area and catch some of the local fish before heading into risky areas. Gale Cliffs with its warm, inviting lake where danger doesn't show until entering the cliffs to awaken the serpent. Stellar Basin provides an entire open area to explore, with minimal islands and creatures actively trying to sink the boat. In stark contrast, the Twisted Strand throws the fishermen into a claustrophobic labyrinth, dense with trees where danger lurks from the moment of arrival. Deeper within the strand, there's a dock with a crashed plane behind it, which offers a semblance of shelter. Upon arrival at the dock, the fisherman encounters the airman, who finds himself stranded. He recounts how he and his crew crashed in the fog, some hitting trees or landing in the water. Survivors gathered by a giant tree, but the forest creatures pick them off one by one. While stranded, the airman spent his time coming up with a plan to put an end to these creatures that made the Twisted Strand their home. But he needs help to do it. Catch the necessary fish for his bait and collect mortar parts from the wreckage of the planes. 
The creature's horrifying red beam earned them the name Mind Suckers from the airmen. He identified three lurking along the strand, but skillfully evaded them. When the fisherman reaches the dock with the fish and mortar parts secured, the buckets of foul-smelling bait are ready for use. By using the bait at the structure encountered earlier, the Mind Suckers can be lured into the trap and eliminated with mortar shells. After loading the fetid bait into the trap, the glowing snake emerges and slowly makes its way towards the structure. The contraption loads lowers the wooden stakes to trap the creature and the mortar shell explodes, leaving nothing but the obliterated corpse of the Mindsucker. Once defeated, the Mindsuckers do not respawn, marking the first time in Dredge where an enemy is permanently removed from the game. Although vines may still pose a threat to the boat at higher panic levels, managing the danger becomes simpler compared to constant roaming threats, providing a safer environment for fishing and exploration. The Twisted Tram began as the most dangerous island, filled with twisting vines, branches, and relentless pursuit from mine suckers. An unexpected ally emerged to eliminate all threats, transforming the region into the most tranquil waters so far. The airman hands over the lost relic, retrieved from one of the mind sucker corpses. And with the forest now behind, the final relic is waiting in Devil's Spine, where the unseeing mother stalks any prey that enters her domain. During the day, the horizon stretches far ahead with vibrant hues, and the murky blue water beneath the boat offers a sense of reassurance while sailing to the next destination. But as night falls, so does the fog. Everything becomes shrouded in the same hazy veil, obscuring visibility to just a few meters ahead of the boat. This adds an additional layer of isolation and loneliness while out in the open. Unable to see what lies around or beneath the boat, the mind begins to conjure terrifying possibilities. Low visibility makes the human imagination run wild, painting vivid pictures of the horrors lurking just beyond the fog. As a child, you may recall the feeling of unease while swimming in a pool, unable to see the bottom and imagining impossible dangers. While implausible, the fear persists because in deep waters, anything seems possible. As the boat slowly approaches the Devil's Spine, looming ancient structures emerge on the horizon, casting an ominous presence against the sky. The atmosphere gradually transforms, filled with an orange hue, reminiscent of infernal depths, tinting the region with an almost hellish aura. Venturing further into the area reveals hydrothermal vents, warning of volcanic activity. But some sea life has adapted to it at an unnatural pace. Schools of small, red-eyed fish darting through the waters, these piranhas gather in swarms beneath the surface, the crimson glows giving away their identity. When these piranhas swarm around a passing ship, it will begin to move slower. Their presence attracts the unseeing mother, who, despite her blindness, detects the disturbance. Responding to the noise, she maneuvers her massive jaws towards the vessel. Upon stepping into the temple located in front of the ancient structures, the fanatic greets the fisherman, noting that his arrival is a providence from the deep itself, tasked with gathering three fathomless flames in the area to light the crucibles. Although seemingly unhinged, engaging in further conversation with the fanatic unveils a surprising revelation. He possesses the watch, the final relic sought by the collector, offering it as a reward for completing the trial. This particular area proves to be the most challenging to navigate, surpassing even the treacherous labyrinth within the Twisted Strand. Wreckages and barriers litter the vicinity, rendering areas near the rocks nearly impassable, precisely where the flames are located. And when there's one piranha, there's multiple, so it's best to keep the geysers close as the only effective means of repelling the pests and evading the unseeing mother's pursuit. But unlike Dredge's focus on the ocean's power, some games incorporate water levels as a minor gameplay element. For example, Super Mario 64, a bright world of silly challenges and enemies that can be defeated by simply jumping on them. But then, in one of the first levels, the mood shifts. Instead of sunny plains, there's a murky lake. You dive in and suddenly, there it is, a monstrous eel hidden like a nightmare in a cheerful world. For many of us, that eel wasn't just a scary monster underwater. It was a scar on our childhood memories. Even the brightest, happiest games can harbor a chilling secret beneath the surface. The terror multiplies when the darkness is hidden within a world of light. 
Dredge continues to cleverly tap into humanity's innate curiosity to imagine the terrifying mysteries lurking beneath the waters, like the eel in Mario 64. However, Devil Spine doesn't conceal what lurks below. In this infernal region, danger is unmasked, as ancient piranhas are in the way of the quest for crucial items. With smart pathfinding and the use of explosives, the fisherman eventually obtains the three fathomless flames, carefully position each flame within the statue's grasp before approaching the fanatic once more. As anticipated, with the illumination of the three flames, the fanatic descends further into madness. May it mark the start of your journey and the end. The fanatic begins to chant and a cold blue flame rises from the wood below him. Seconds later, the inferno engulfs him. Once the flames subside, the fanatic leaves the pocket watch behind, the final artifact for the collector. Before reaching the conclusion of Dredge, there is one last area awaiting exploration, the Pale Reach. In the expansion, the fisherman won't be searching for relics to deliver to the collector, instead solving the mystery of a contained frozen mass on the trail of an Arctic expedition crew that disappeared nearly 100 years ago. The map shows a giant red circle, tempting sailors to navigate south towards the uncharted territory. Sailing closer to the Pale Reach reveals a huge conglomerate of ice that looms into view and towers up into the air. Upon drawing nearer and docking at the pontoon, the traveling merchant explains that the mass of ice seems to have appeared out of nowhere and how it must have drifted up from even farther south. There are schematics that were used to assemble an icebreaker, but the most crucial pieces are missing. Find them. Bring them back and it'll make exploring the Pale Reach a little easier and less dangerous. Shortly after venturing into the ice mass, progress is halted by a roadblock set up by a photographer, aiming for the perfect shot of a nearby narwhal. She tasks the fisherman with filling the ice sheet with fish to lure the narwhal. Upon completion, the secretive creature arrives, shattering the barrier and granting access to the insides of the frozen mass. The main enemy of the area shows itself, but instead of fins, the narwhal has arms with claws built to go through ice and boats. The monster lingers out of sight until the horn's glow cuts the darkness, but it's the chilling moments in between that truly gnaw at your sanity. There is a sporadic echoing heartbeat, a phantom pulse, but it's unclear where the sound is coming from. In the center of the Pale Reach lies a dock with a block of ice containing a mysterious figure. This individual, the captain of the ill-fated expedition, implores the fishermen not to disturb the ice, hinting at darker secrets concealed within. The story about to unfold was based on The Terror, an American horror TV series which was inspired by a real Arctic expedition where the crew disappeared. It was later discovered what really happened through journal entries by the dying crew. Two British ships tried to navigate an unexplored part of the Northwest Passage. The ships were frozen and trapped in the ice, where 20 men died stranded and the rest set off on foot, presumably towards settled parts of Canada. They were never seen again. The fisherman slowly uncovers the fate of the Arctic expedition team by uncovering journal entries detailing how the crew's captain, navigator, and boatswain became mesmerized by the mangled and yet living remains of a colossal eldritch beast trapped in ice. As the crew attempted to free the creature under the promise of treasure, the first officer led a mutiny, ending in the crew either dying or fleeing the pill reach, with only four men remaining and becoming trapped in the ice themselves, still bound to the creature and unable to die. After finding enchanted ice axes, the fishermen frees the men from their torment, leading to their demise and ultimately destroying the creature. The chilling environment and sense of isolation of the Pale Reach fit seamlessly with the rest of the world. Frozen areas in video games emphasize insignificance and vulnerability. Jagged ice flows and an oppressive sense of desolation create a strong feeling of being small and alone in an uncaring environment. The creaking of ice, the strange glow of the moon, and the phantom heartbeat makes it feel like otherworldly forces are lurking just out of sight. The Pale Reach uses subtle, unsettling details to suggest a much larger horror lurking beneath the surface. Just like the other islands, it's the sense of the unknown and what lies beyond human understanding that drives the cosmic horror experience. Dredge's genius lies in making your own fear the most potent enemy.
With all five relics securely in the collector's possession, he instructs the fishermen to navigate to a location just south of the Marrows together, where a far grander than usual crimson light streaks across the sky. Opening the ancient tome, the collector begins to recite its contents while casting each retrieved relic into the depths below. As the final relic plunges into the ocean, the deceased wife materializes, whose messages were contained within the bottle spread across the ocean. From the watery abyss behind her, a colossal creature rises. The game concludes with Greater Marrow engulfed in flames, symbolizing the world's descent into chaos and despair, marking the grim finale of Dredge. But there is an alternative. It's possible to defeat the evil by seeking out the old mayor of the Marrows near the Devil's Spine. He recounts a tale of a man and his wife who stumbled upon an ancient book and were cursed by a mysterious presence in the fog. The mayor screams to throw the silver and crimson book back into the ocean and find the lighthouse keeper, who was present during those fateful events. Though speaking in riddles, the lighthouse keeper urges the fisherman to move and take control. Confronting the collector once more, the fisherman demands answers about the enigmatic book of the deep. In a dramatic turn, the screen fades to black amidst the shattering of glass, revealing the collector's reflection in a mirror before the fisherman. It becomes clear that the collector was the fisherman all along, driven by a vision from the book to sacrifice everything and resurrect his wife. The fisherman cast the book into the ocean, where a leviathan consumes both it and the boat. The story provides few answers about the creatures and their intentions. Yet, a subtle hint suggests the Leviathan acts as a protector of the ocean. Perhaps its primary goal wasn't to hunt the fishermen, but to contain the book in order to prevent a greater evil from being unleashed. The contrast between familiar sea life and the grotesque aberrations hints at a larger conflict between the natural and the unnatural. Is the Eldritch God the source of these horrors that the Leviathan is trying to suppress? Or could the fisherman's own mind be unraveling under the corruption of cosmic forces beyond comprehension? There are multiple ways to interpret the journey and endings of Dredge, and the game's power comes from its ability to keep most of its secrets shrouded in mystery. But is it really possible to understand the motives of cosmic beings? Dredge crafts a world both terrifying and captivating. Its carefully woven atmosphere and the promise of uncovering its secrets keeps pushing you forward by the desire to understand the secrets that lie beneath. The game's depth means I couldn't possibly cover everything it has to offer. There are countless secrets waiting to be discovered, if you're ready to take the dive yourself. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please support the channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell notification icon to stay up to date. See you in the next video.